Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to my world. Today I want to talk about 19, 2024. Wow, I'm still in the 1900s. How time passes. Because few people called me up and they asked me, Amos, what are your plans for next year? Well, next year I expect to have book signing events. As a matter of fact, Jakob Heller, the renowned artist and sculptor, did events for people like Judge Janine, uh, uh, Connie Francis. They were all very successful at his uh, gallery, and it's called Gallery 22. It's in Boca Raton, Florida. And there, uh, when I was in there once, I saw a picture, it wasn't long ago, of uh, General Jack Keane. And I told him, wow, that's a beautiful picture. He's wearing a medal, and you can see Donald Trump putting the Medal uh, of Peace on him. So I said, when are you going to give it to him? He says, well, you know, I'm going to invite him. I'm going to send it to him. I said, why don't you actually give it to him at, uh, at Mar-a-Lago? Because you're the one who gave him the Medal of Peace at the, at the White House when you were the president. Wouldn't it be beautiful if you give him the portrait with Donald Trump over there? And he looked at me and he said, you know, Amos, you're right. But how are we going to get into Mar-a-Lago? I asked him, did you ever have an event? He said, yeah, I, I had an event at Mar-a-Lago showing, you know, my pictures and my artwork. I said, why don't we do it? He says, well, Amos, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. I says, why? I says, I'm going to write a letter to the general and tell him that we want to present it. I would assume he would be very proud to be there. I'm going to call the president, Trump, of course, his team, and tell him what we plan to do. And because you were going to do a book signing for me, I'm going to have my book signing guides there. And there, I think it's exciting. He says, Amos, I think you're dreaming. I don't think I'm dreaming because all those people are all very patriotic. And let's go a step further. Let's do it as a fundraising event. Yes, fundraising event for wounded soldiers, for American and Israelis. The biggest ally we have is Israel. We're friends. We both have wounded soldiers. Let's do it for both of them. And you can invite all the rich people, people with money who are willing to donate for a good cause. I know it sounds very old-fashioned and corny, but I, I really believe it. Give example, the statue, when he presents it, that would be just great. Also, the statue itself, by the way, is 28 inches tall. It is made out of uh, silver, and it would be great in Mar-a-Lago. And that I would bid off, starting at $250,000. Our soldiers and the Israeli soldiers need it. What a better way to show love. And I'm sure we can auction it off and it would stay at Mar-a-Lago, which is a national monument, monument by itself too. Of course, I will have my book signing and I will invite his friend, Peter Tickton, Peter Tickton and uh, Donald Trump went to New York Military Academy together when they were friends. Now, Peter is a very renowned attorney here in Florida. He won major cases, uh, class action lawsuits in the billions. Now, Peter Tickton also wrote a book. And the name of the book is What Makes Trump Tick? No, it's not a political book. It's a book about a man, a father. It's about, in Jewish, they have a word called mensch. It's more than a human being. It's somebody who really cares. I think it's time that we should show the world the real Trump, the real giving man. Nobody's perfect. 
But look what he did for our country. Look at him when he was the president. I don't have to go into history. We all know it, what the man did. And they're right now they're trying to frame it. And by the way, I take it personally because many years ago, I went through a witch hunt. It cost me a lot of money. And I won the battle, but I lost the war. Until my wife said to me one day, Amos, please stop fighting. I don't want you to be the richest man in the cemetery. All the work and you get very upset. And she says, Amos, I don't want a fancy home. I don't need fancy cars. All I want is a small home or a condo paid for and a car paid for. I don't want to live through this night. That's all I want. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. I got you. I got our children, our grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. That's all she ever wanted. I guess I was out to conquer this world, and I got my butt kicked, even so I made a lot of money and I lost it. Now at age 80, and mentally, honestly, I don't feel it, I'm still out to conquer the world. It's not money. It's a drive you have. That's why I understand Donald Trump. Will I make the money? I used to love to give to chairs. Of course I will. I have no doubt. But show me any place in the world that a man 80 years old can go out and start over again. I'm very proud of it. But on the other hand, I have a lot of friends that are also supporting my cause. Now, at that event, like I mentioned, we're going to have Peter Tickton talking about his book and he will sign it. I will talk about my books, especially two of them. One of them is called Max and the Red-Headed Dragon. It's a book with a very important message. Don't judge people by the color, gender, lifestyle, or the way they look. Judge people only what's in the heart and mind. Such a simple message, but we keep on forgetting. The other book I want to introduce is Mama, Why Am I Black? Not white like you. Of course, the title is Mama, Why Am I Black? And it's a story about intermarriage. It's about a white Jewish girl that has red hair, blue eyes, marries, and she's white, and she marries a black man from Ethiopia. So when the boy is five, six years old, he asks his mother a question. Mama, why am I black? Not white like you. And the mother answers him. His kinder, you were created from the best of your mother and father. That's why you have such beautiful red hair and blue eyes like me. And beautiful brown skin like your dad. But most important, most important is that you're so handsome and so smart. What a beautiful message. The message is always be proud of who you are and what you are. I remember reading it. I was invited once to, uh, uh, once <laughs> to, to a reading and I walked in and there were mostly black kids and intermarriage. And and they looked at me, here comes a white dude, six four, walking in, and they were all like, Yeah, let's listen to what he has to say. And I picked out the book and I started telling him how the mother answered the questions. All those kids' eyes, even the parents, they like opened wide. They were like, huh? And as I was watching him, my eyes actually became watery. I felt like going, <laughs> but obviously, obviously, I didn't. I didn't do it. Excuse me. What is important? I got the message across in all my books. That's what I'm trying to do. And at the book signing event at Mar-a-Lago, that's exactly what I want to do. I can see the general. I can see all the people involved. I'm also gonna invite. Lee Greenwood as a singer I would like him to sing the song that I donated which is called Trump is Coming Lyric right now we have over 80,000 views for a while uh, Twitter took me off now they put me back on again 
It's a beautiful song. It's a song originally written by George M. Cohen over there. I changed the words, changed the music a little, and that's a beautiful rally song for Trump. And he can use it for free because we must have Trump back in the White House, which is one of the words in there. Anyway, that's one of the plans to have the that the book signing events and we will have it. We will make it happen. So I got to make sure I get the message to the right people. The other thing I want to talk about is the uh, one of my new book that's coming out next month. It's called The Blinking Orchid. It's about a little girl that's dying. And it's no medicine, the doctors, they can't find any cure for it. But she looks out the window every morning and she sees a bee and an orchid. And the orchid blinks at her and she blinks back at the orchid. Everybody pacified the girl, her name was Lisa, thinking it's a little girl that has a dream. At the end, the bee flies in, the mother forgets to close the window. The girl yells out like a thousand needles stinging her, and she goes into a coma. A week later, she wakes up, and she says, Mommy, Mommy, where's the bee? The mother, with one swipe, killed the bee, and she fell on the floor. But the girl was all of a sudden well. They couldn't understand why. The doctor was amazed. Maybe the girl wasn't just dreaming. Sometimes Mother Nature, maybe divine intervention, whatever it was, saved the girl. And she was alive. Had a happy ending. But there's a message in there. That book would be great for people that are sick. That there's always hope. Hope has to be in here and in here. Never give up. As a matter of fact, look at me at 80. <laughs> Now, one of the other things I'm going to do is a series of books. I put it down over here. And the name of the books, the series is going to be called Papa Why. Now, a few people told me, why don't you say Mama? As a matter of fact, I would appreciate it if you go into my website, www.nollpublishing.com, and there... Uh, Give me your comments, what you suggest. The reason I use Papa is because my kids called me Papa. I called my father Papa. My grandkids called my grandkids call me Papa. <laughs> so I decided Papa why, but I'm open-minded for your suggestions. But here are the 10 books. I'm just going to go in the highlights because I want to teach the kids because it's very hard today. How do you teach the kids about honesty, integrity? Think about it. When a congresswoman calls you and me, she calls us scumbags. Her name is uh, Waters, congresswoman. Then a woman who's there uh, calls me a deplorable, Hillary Clinton. And then the, the disrespect of a person like Pelosi. She gets up. While the president, I don't care if it's Democrat, Republican, or anybody, and she physically, in front of the people, tears up the speech. It's like showing the middle finger to America. How do we teach our children what's right and wrong? And then you got pencil neck, Adam Schiff, lying, lying to the people. And those people get voted in again, again and again. America, wake up. The only way we're going to change it is by teaching our kids values and respect. Look at the generations we have professors today. So much hate, discrimination, anti-Semitism. Anyway, but here are the books. It just says, Papa, why do we love the Constitution? This book introduces children to the importance of the U.S. Constitution 
its principles and how to protect the rights and freedom. Papa, what is mega? Make America free again, and I explain it. Or Papa, why do we respect the military? Papa, why do we believe in unlimited government in limited government? I'm sorry. Papa, why do we cherish the Second Amendment? Papa, why do we value traditional family values? Papa, why do we believe in physical responsibility? Papa, why do we believe in free speech? Papa, why do we support small business? This book highlights the importance of small business in the economy, teaching children about entrepreneurship, innovation, and the value of supporting all local communities. This is what we have to teach our kids. And now I have some priority images I want you to see, starting with General Jack Keane, very now gener general. And I'm going to leave now to go over to Yaakov, have a studio in Boca Raton, which is a half hour for me, and take care uh, a video which will also show on this video on this podcast. And hopefully I'll see you soon in my next podcast. And next year we're gonna try to set up a regular program to interview many people. Thank you and looking forward to seeing you again at my next podcast. I've got the power, I've got the spirit All my trials and tribulations are left behind I know I've won, but I'm not done All the world and bright future can be mine If I keep Hi, Yaakov. Hi, I'm always good fine. to see you. How are you? Fine. Do you remember you told me once you had an event at the uh, mar lago Yes. Okay. And you also, we were going to have a book signing. You still want to set up a book signing for me here at your gallery, which I know you had one with Judge Janine. It was a very successful. Connie Francis. So I'm very honored that you think enough of me to put me in here. But you said something when I was here a few weeks ago. You showed me the picture ah, that you painted Jack of General Jack King. I was very impressed. Then I asked you, I said, why didn't you present You said you were going to send it to him. I said, why didn't you present it to him at Mago Lago? It's perfect for two reasons. Number one, it was President Trump who put the Medal of Freedom on him. What better presentation? Taking that picture, you and President Trump, a 41st president, God willing, a 47th president, he's presenting the picture with both of you, both of you together. That's so wonderful. That's great. And great then, idea. Not, not only that, you also created a statue. Um, this is a statue which statue was for the Trump. inauguration, for inauguration of uh, Trump when he became president. And uh, would you like to take a close, close uh, picture of it? 45. 45th president. It's made of silver. Tell the people how it was made and where it was sculptured. Fine silver. I made the model, the original model. I carved it in wax. Mm -hmm. And it was about uh, six months labor of love. Right. And then I took it to my foundry in Israel. I set up a foundry back in 1972 for a special process that they don't do here in the United States. Oh. The EPA banned all free cyanide, and this was a process of breaking right. down the silver by means of electricity and free cyanide. Mm -hmm. 
I went to Israel and set up the foundry there. They knew how to take care of the right. cyanide. I had professors from the Hebrew University overseeing the process, and it was safe. So yeah. we, I took it to Israel, the wax model. Took it on an L out flight. First class cabins had enough space for the wax. <laughs> and I submerged it in the bath, and I worked on it there. And we did the polishing and the finishing, and then I shipped it back here with a piece of Judean marble. Beautiful. And uh, the plaque on it. What, what, what inspired you to do that particular uh, statue? I was impressed at his inauguration. Just mm -hmm. visual, I'm a visual person, right. of course. And just the way they looked. I mean, since I, I was in the United States Navy, mm -hmm. I've learned to respect the man, whether you like him or not. You know, mm -hmm. you have to respect the uniform. Right. I learned that a long time ago. But Trump, I liked the man personally. When I met him at Mar-a-Lago mm -hmm. the first time, he was so kind and mm -hmm. so warm. And it was at a party for a home shopping network, and I was sitting with Barry Diller, mm -hmm. who owned QVC and he bought home shopping mm -hmm. after he sold QVC. And I wound up on, from that night at Mar-a-Lago, I wound up on QVC for two years selling my jewelry. But not only that, I, I did an exhibition of all my silver work, my biblical sculptures, pieces that were presented to, to presidents and kings. I had a great exhibition at mar a lago And Beautiful. it was a great, I just appreciated President Trump like no other. You know what would be beautiful? If this statue is being presented to Trump, as a matter of fact, I don't want to give him five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And they, we can do it at the auction, starting at say two hundred fifty thousand dollars. And the event, my book signing event, will be as a as a fundraiser, literally as a fundraiser for for soldiers, American and America's best ally, Israel, the only true ally it has. For me, Israel as an American, I'm going to say it's it's like the canary in the in the cave. What's happening over there can happen over here. That's why we have to be strong and we have to unite. It's very important. And in that fundraising, I will also have the gentleman, Peter Tickton. He's an attorney, a very renowned attorney, won some major uh, lawsuits. And uh, he wrote a book, What Makes Trump Tick? It's not political. It's about the man Trump, a father, a husband, a, a man. In Jewish they have an expression, it's called a mensch. It's more than, it's more than a human being, somebody who is feeling. So this is the message we have to give out to America. He's the best president, he's the man born for our time. Do I like him? I never met him personally, but people say, well, his personality. Well, I wanna have one question to all those people. You have to have operation, you're dying, there are two doctors. One doesn't have better, bed, uh, bedside manners, the other one has perfect bedside manners. And that's a dog that belongs to Yaakov. <laughs> Come he wants to have his Come piece on. in there. And that one doctor who doesn't have bedside Sit. Matter, manners, Sit. Stay. he has a 100% uh, success uh, uh, ratio. The other doctor, very polite, very nice, only said only 30 percent which one would you use what i'm saying to you is if you don't like the way trump talks that's fine see what it does for the nation don't listen to all this bs here on television so many lies and what i feel bad about is our children because we got to teach them honesty integrity and what are they learning they don't know who to believe and who not to believe i wish i was younger i would go for politics i could eat one of those people up alive bunch of liars when you when I when when a woman like uh, what's the name Waters uses the word scumbag, or a person like like Hillary uses deplorable, she's right. She and her both of us are deplorable scumbags. That's what she's probably talking about. But not the rest of America. I love America, and I will do everything I can. I also want to say, which is called Trump is coming lyric. I got already 80,000 views. Twitter took me off for a while, now they put me back on. People love this song, and I want to see Trump at the 
next big event, once he's nominated, to use that song. There will be a new rally song. And I like to be there next to him and I want to say, Black life matters, white life matters, all life matters. And if you want freedom, justice in the American way, Trump matters. God bless America and Trump. And Jacob, thank you very much for I'm your time. Sure, I'm sorry about Jake, you, but he wants to go out. That's okay. When you gotta go out, you gotta go out. <laughs>